My question is more uh, to the growing potential disparity between rich and poor in the country. When your administration came into power, you were certainly focused on it. May very well have been one of the reasons why Donald Trump was elected. You passed a tax cut you said would potentially address it. Very much unclear that was the case. And then the pandemic hit. And it does seem as we come out of this pandemic that one of the effects is going to be to, to, to widen the disparity between rich and poor in this country. What policies are you going to put in place to potentially address that, in addition, of course, to the social unrest we're seeing right now, which in part may also be a reflection of that? Well, it's look, I, I, what I'd want to do <laughs> respectfully is take issue with the premise of your question. When the president uh, cut taxes uh, across the board, when we rolled back regulation, unleashed American energy, uh, we saw unemployment uh, drop across this country. We saw wages rise across this country. I mean, we, we just came through a period where we had the lowest unemployment ever recorded for African Americans, the lowest unemployment ever recorded for Hispanic Americans. And I, when I was governor of the state of Indiana from a manufacturing state, we, we were always pushing on how we can increase wages. That was, you all know, here on this network, that was the stubborn indicator. But under the president's leadership and the policies of the last three years, we actually saw wages rising, and they were rising most rapidly for hardworking blue-collar Americans. And so we were closing the gap with the policies that President Trump put into effect. Uh, and, uh, and I, I want to assure you that if, if there's another phase of recovery efforts, we're going to make sure we have more pro-growth policies in addition to direct relief for families and businesses as we put this coronavirus more and more uh, in the past uh, every day. But the, the contrast between the policies this president enacted over the last three and a half years and, and what, uh, what Joe Biden and the Democrats are advocating could not be more clear. Uh, it was the president's policies, expanding opportunity, that we're seeing wages rise, that we're closing that income gap, unemployment at record lows, particularly for minorities. And that's the message we're going to take to the American people come November 3rd. Right. And now many of those same populations are both on the front lines in terms of the pandemic and also make up a lot of the municipal workforces around the country, Mr. Vice President. We've had a parade of right. governors and mayors join us on CNBC. Uh, over the last few months, uh, both blue states and red states. And many of them are concerned, given the significant decrease in revenues that they're seeing as a result of the pandemic and the shutdown. What, if anything, is the administration willing to do to help those states that potentially have to cut their municipal workforces in order to meet budget shortfalls? Well, one of the things that we did early on, the Treasury Department uh, uh, gave greater flexibility in in some of the initial relief funding that we distributed so that it, it can support uh, payroll for firefighters and police and first responders. But make no mistake about it, the, the president's expressed a strong uh, openness to uh, another relief bill. We're speaking with governors. We had our uh, latest conference call with governors across the country this last week. And I, and I have to tell you, uh, since the day the president tapped me to lead the White House Coronavirus Task Force, uh, he, he told me it was to be a whole-of-government approach, but that meant bringing together all of the governors, all of the state governments around the country with the full resources of the federal government. And, and that's really been a seamless partnership every step of the way, and that through the mitigation period, uh, through the relief programs. But also, remember, it was, it was April 15th, a, a month before today's survey was taken, that the president directed our team to send to the states guidelines to open up America again. And, and, uh, and so states could be ready in, in early May to begin to put those guidelines into practice. And I think the, the results that you're seeing today are the fact that in states across the country, now all 50 states uh, are reopening. They took those guidelines, a phased approach, put them into practice. But governors around the country know that President Trump and I uh, are, uh, are ready, willing, and able to work with them to, to see them through this time. And those expenses directly related to the coronavirus uh, are what we believe will be appropriately a part of any additional relief effort. But it's got, guys, I'm telling you, the <laughs> president is very firm and very clear on this. We're going to help families. Uh, we're going to help small businesses. Uh, we're open to helping states with coronavirus-related costs. 
but President Donald Trump believes to keep this recovery growing and, and moving, we've got to have the pro-growth policies that have contributed to the fundamental strength of this economy from the beginning. That includes a payroll tax cut, and we're going to be rolling our sleeves up and going to work uh, with Democrats and Republicans uh, in the Congress to accomplish just that.